the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Jen. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Laura. I'm so excited. So happy to have you here. I'm like super fan of yours. So I'm so excited to chat with you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I live in the Midwest. We were just talking about that. And it's kind of lonely uh, scape out here. There's not a lot of romance readers. So uh, in 2018, I started my YouTube channel. um, And romance is what I fell into during the dark times of the pandemic. Like I think a lot of us where it was like, we wanted hope and happily ever afters all the time. But otherwise I'm a pretty, uh, I'm a pretty simple, simple girl. I mean, I grew up on a farm out here. And so the internet and YouTube really helped me find my community who likes the same things that I do. Um, But yeah, it's a crazy journey. I mean, I, you know, I've just started trying to go full-time YouTubing too, that, that I was kind of forced into that in a gentle, but not so gentle way. So I guess it's going to be my life now for real. So we'll see what happens with that. I, it's scary and exciting at the same time, but I don't know. That feels like weird. I'm weird to like intro myself, but. <laughs> oh my gosh. First of all, I am so excited for this and we should chat offline about this. Uh, the other part is I am so excited that you have created a channel, a created community of romance readers and you have, you bring so much, like your personality speaks in your, in your, in your, in your YouTube. Like, it's like it, people go, like people look for like YouTube, not just for like the book recommendations, but also the person's personality. And like, you're, you're such a good book matcher, like a big matchmaker. I'd be like, this is why you should read this book, you know? So so I think you're like in the right space, (laughs) what I'm trying to say. So so let's chat about like your like your romance and like so how do you talk to us about the channel first like what is a book refuge and like what can readers expect from your channel yeah that's a that's a great way to put that I like that uh yeah so the book refuge that name I feel like really encapsulates what I wanted it to be um when I started this I was just missing getting to talk about books. I don't, I don't know another way to say that. Like I had been living alone for like two years at that point. I could sometimes talk to my roommate about books beforehand, but she would mostly just listen to me patiently. And I stumbled across booktube like one does when I think I was looking up a review for some random book. I just was like, I want to see what other people think about this. Not knowing that booktube was this whole thing. And so when I started my channel, I was reading romance, but I was reading everything. I was reading YA fantasy, fantasy thriller. Like I was reading some of everything because I've always been willing to. And then when I started the book refuge, my like saying was like, it's a safe place to gush about books. You know, I really try to keep like, it's not that I never rant about a book because I definitely do sometimes when that book just hits you. I'm a very emotional reader and one of the things that I, the people that I gravitated towards in booktube, you know, was like, pull in banana books. She would do these fun, crazy mm-hmm. reviews of like the Sarah J Mass books or like the Cassandra Clare books. And I just loved that passion that she would share. And I wanted to bring that to books that I wasn't hearing talked about. Mm-hmm. And so for me, that was more underrated YA fantasy or historical romance. Like I, I was talking about rom- romance back then too. Um, and things in that aspect. And then it just kind of evolved into I don't have time to go deep into these fantasies that a lot of times don't have a happily ever after, or they have a really bittersweet thing. And I mean, I, I love those. I grew, I grew up on those too, but I just wanted a happier place. And then I started to realize that, how do I word this? Because romance is read it's the most read that there is. You know, we say that in the romance community, we're like, it is like the most read genre that there is, but it's like the silent majority kind of thing mm-hmm. where people don't get to gush about it or, or maybe they'll hear that their, their grandma read the same book as them. And they'll, you know, be like, Oh, I don't want to gush about it. But I just want to create a place without shame and without judgment that whether you're reading a super kinky book that you don't think anyone else will understand why you like it, or you want to read a book with like, that's a very dark and intense, or you just want to read a fluffy book that 
there's nothing in it but just some smutty good times. Like I wanted to be the place to give recommendations for those. So long story short, the book refuge is a safe place to gush and chat about books and whatever those books are. My focus happens to be romance right now, but my point is I don't want there to be shame for any kind of books people want to read. And that's kind of how I landed on the book refuge. And it's just been a crazy journey about what that's evolved to. And when I hear what other people's perspectives are of me, it's very interesting because it's what I want them to take from it. So that makes me excited. Like I want to be like no nonsense. If you ask me for a recommendation, I'm going to give you my honest opinion and it's going to be a fun place. Like there's not a lot of negativity allowed here at all. Like Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, it's like honestly, like no shame about it. I think there's like there's such a stigma about reading romance, and like I'm hoping that Spring Bears, like creators like you, or, like even podcasts like mine, and other people like saying like you know there's no shame about it. Like you do your own thing. Like honestly, and it's a great genre, and there's enough for everyone. Like just because you don't you you don't like one type of romance, trust me, there's a romance for you. It's just like there's a yeah. book for you. Like it's just out there. <laughs> so all right so you do read quite a few books so how do you get your recommendations like how do you find those books like hidden gems like under underrated gems that we're dying to hear about yeah that's that's a good question I mean I I get them in a lot of places other people do you know I have carefully not so carefully but like I've built up my community by finding other romance booktubers um, and Instagrammers that like our tastes align as much as possible. Like I know the people who are my like ride or die where I'm like, we agree on all the books that we read. And then there's the people that if I want to step outside my circle a little bit, I'll maybe try one of their recommendations. I now at this point, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is what I wanted. My viewers recommend the books to me. Like there's nothing more perfect than just having book recommendations funneled into me from all of these people. Like I have a book rec form that's available for all my viewers. So if there's a book, they're like, Jen hasn't heard about this one. They can put it in there. And then I check that once a month and pick books out of there that I've never heard of or books that, okay, everyone wants me to read this Colleen Hoover. Okay. I'll (laughs) fucking read this book, you know, where I will cave to peer pressure sometimes, but also, I mean, my historical romance collection is just from finding pretty books, mm-hmm. like 100%. I mean, Step Back Saturday and like Cover Less Friday are these hashtags on Instagram. And I find a lot of the books I want to read from there um, because they will have these gorgeous art on the front. Like, they're just so beautiful. And I'm just drawn to like the sensuality and the beauty of like the clinch cover on the front of a book. So it's really kind of from everywhere. And even though I do talk shit about TikTok sometimes because they have drama for it, I do love the like quickness of the recommendations on TikTok. Like someone will go and they'll be like, Hey, you like this trope age gap? Here's 10 of them. And they throw them up. And that can be great. Sometimes I found a couple books that I absolutely loved from just those really quick, like trope videos. There's a whole nother side to the drama on TikTok that I think it, it makes it a toxic environment. But if I just want like quick recommendations, that can be great, especially if you're following people that you trust on there. Mm -hmm. That can be great. So I really get them from everywhere, but mostly it's from trusted friends I have. And then, you know, trope videos are great. I love those. (laughs) Oh. yeah I actually I'm all about trope videos and trope like just be, give me the recommendations I'm like just tell me you know I want to yeah. see the book and sometimes I have to see the book like a couple of times for me to be like okay like yes I'm gonna read it like or I heard it from a couple of times like all right like this is what I'm supposed to be reading you know um yeah. so sometimes repetition does help like sometimes you feel like oh I've seen this book a couple of times so like chances are you're more likely to pick it up you know yeah. That's the marketing technique right there. Is is. they say it's like you have to see something seven times before you maybe will get it. Before you get it. So so Um, yeah. Um, and then how do you read so much? Yeah. (laughs) This always makes me laugh. This always makes me laugh. So the answer is I don't have a life. And I don't mean as in I'm a vampire and not alive, but I am 29. I'm single. I don't have pets or children or spouse. I don't live by my family. And for the past like 
six years, I've worked at jobs where I could listen to an audiobook while I was working. So pretty much every day I can get through a book and a half, two books a day that way, because my audio speed has increased over time. That's something people never understand. But when you listen to a books all the time, like your reading speed does go up eventually. So I can listen to a book at one and a half, two times speed. So an eight hour audiobook only takes me four hours. So there you are. Also, I prioritize reading. I don't really have any other hobbies. Even when I am spending time with family and doing things, I always have a book on my phone, whether audio or I have the Kindle app on my phone. Um, so standing in line, you can read 10 pages while you're waiting to check out. And, and then the thing that I do say is also it's practice. Like I'm a speed reader now because anything you do for eight hours a day, you're going to be better at it. You know, that's a, that's a hard one when people are like, you're just skim reading or you're skipping this. I'm like, I promise I'm not. I'm just, I'm faster than you. I, I don't know what to say. I'm like, if you if you played basketball every single day, you're, you're going to be better at basketball than me. Like I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fall on my face. And it doesn't make me a better reader than anyone else. I'm just very dedicated. Like when I started you booktube, like I was reading like 150 books a year, which is still very above what other people would, but that's like a book every other day. And now I can read two to three books a day. And last year I read 680 books. Like so it, people want the tips and the tricks. And like, there are some, there are always keep your book with you, be ready to s- slip it in when you can like prioritize the time when you read, like, are you giving yourself the last hour of every day? Like there are those kind of tips, but part of it is, is like, I'm literally, that's all that I'm doing. You know, when I get home from work or now as it is like working for myself, like I can be reading all day long mm-hmm. and, you know, so it's not a perfect answer. People like there's, if you, if you have kids and a husband, there's only so many hours you can devote to it and it's not your fault. Like you have a life and you should live it. Like, (laughs) so yeah, well, I think it's just hard prioritized because I would tell you, like there was, there were a couple of years that I read like a book a day and Mm -hmm. like, it was, but I was not on Instagram. I was like, not on Facebook. Like I, and I'm just like you, I had, I'm single. I'm in my forties now, but like I was in my thirties and yeah, I was living in New York and there was stuff to do, but I still was able to do the things, but I was like prioritizing reading, you know, as an important thing. I think it's like cutting out the distractions. Like, you know, I don't watch that much TV. Like it's really rarely that I watch TV. Like, you know, like if it's, if it's not outlander, I'm not watching it. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) there are things that you could like you remove you know the noise and you're like okay and make the habit and so it's how you prioritize your time like I think for me like audio is like I go through waves of it um but it's one thing that I'm like I wish I could incorporate during my work day I just happen to get distracted <laughs> you know yeah. Oh, um, but yeah it's like it's just to prioritizing things and the more you do it the faster the easier it gets you know so Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So let's chat about some mafia. Um, yes. We have a mafia readathon first. Talk to us about that and then tell us about mafia. Yeah. So this will be the second round of the mafia romance readathon. The first one was June last year when there was some of my friends just saying like, we should do a weekend where we only read mafia. And one of the things I always suggest to people who are new to whether it's bookstagram, booktube, whatever they're doing is to get a part of a readathon because it's a great way to like meet other creators who are doing the same thing as you. And you know, you have something in common anyway. And I just, I love mafia romance. I like it because it's, it's dark and it also has elements kind of of like a historical romance in it where you know, there's like arranged marriages and there's virgin on her wedding night and there's touch her and you die. Like there's all these things. So, and I love a toxic man in fiction. I have no excuses. I crave it. I love it so much. So we started this. So this, uh, in two weeks from now, May 5th through the 18th, or I don't know when this is going up, but May 5th and 8th of this year, we will be doing this four day readathon where, you, there's like a build your own bingo board and these different prompts where you can, you know, choose books that fit into those prompts and get a bingo. And then I have a few of my author friends who've donated prizes. They've donated some of their signed books. Um, there's some merch that we have as well. So it's just a really fun way to promote um, 
reading together. And this time the theme is mafia. Like my book community, they do quite a few readathons. Like we have historical one coming up soon. We're doing those things. So this one is just a bit more of like a specific niche. Like there's even a dark romance readathon people do where mafia would fit into that dark, you know, but this one is just really kind of a specific niche. So yeah, I have some other creator friends, novel life, Tiff talks pages, peace, love books, Jess and Reed romance which is also a smart woman read romance who I know she's been on your podcast before and the princess of paperback they're all youtubers and book screamers who we're going to be hosting this together so it's just a fun thing to promote reading together and in this case we're reading some spicy mafia romances together so all right so let's chat about for those who are unfamiliar with mafia what is a mafia romance and what constitutes that (laughs) you know yeah. So it, it kind of can have an umbrella and it's any, it's really anything to do with like organized crime syndicates mm-hmm. or, or groups. So that can cover pretty much any country or like creed that it happens in, you know, like there's the cartel, there's Cosa Nostra, which is Sicilian mafia. Then there's Italian mafia as it is the Bratva, which is Russian Irish mob. There's, it's called the the familia or the outfit like there's all these different names for it but basically whenever there is like a crime syndicate that has like hierarchical levels they deal in illegal activities outside of the law you know there's dark themes like you know drug trafficking sex trafficking um blackmailing politicians like all of those things so mm-hmm that's the best way to say it is it's it's a it's a form of like dark romance that focuses on a crime organization mm-hmm. so it's probably the best way to say it <laughs> and there's alpha heroes you're sometimes your sociopath or sometimes you know there's a little bit of everything but it's like it tends to hit on the toxic you know you know yep. like more darker themes <laughs> yes yeah there are some wholesome ones but very few you're mostly yeah. Yeah. It, and, and one thing I meant to say too, is that a few of the books we're going to talk about, well, all of them, there are like trigger warnings in these. I didn't write down each individual for each book, but because mafia romance fits under the dark romance, like category, just beware to, if you're sensitive to any of those things I just listed, like I just said, sex trafficking and drug trafficking, just beware. Like, again, some of them are heavier than others and some of them, it can be a lot. So yeah. So look at good reads for terror warnings, you know, sometimes they're listed there so you get an idea of it. And there's some gruesome murders and some side of things. Yeah, torture <laughs> and assaults, quite a few of those. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's chat some recommendations. What do you recommend for us? Yeah, this was so hard. You guys, Laura asked me to pick a few and I, on my channel, first I'll say on my channel, I have 10 mafia recommendation videos. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. I have literally hundreds that I could recommend, but I, (laughs) I picked a couple that I feel like kind of cover the gamut of different tropes you might see. Um, and yeah, so the first one I'm recommending is actually a standalone, which this is something else to say, like standalones in mafia romance is pretty rare. They're usually part of series where you will have like all the siblings or you'll have people within the same syndicate. So this is a series you should, these are books you should be prepared to binge an entire series or fall into a group. So anyway, enough qualifiers. The first one I want to recommend is Run, Posey, Run by Kate C. Wells. And this is throwing you right in the deep end because this hero is a psychopath and it's very unique among mafia romances because it starts with the hero and the heroine are actually dating. And the heroine gets sabotaged by someone sending a sex tape to her boyfriend that was filmed many years ago, but he sees it and he thinks she's cheated on him and he kicks her out and says, if I ever see you again, I'm going to fucking kill you. So not a great start for our hero here (laughs) starting off like this, but Posey, the heroine, is like, you know what? I've always let men dictate my life. I've always let them decide um, how much I was worth or this or whatever. And she's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. So she sets off on her own. She's going to take care of herself. And immediately the hero realizes he was an asshat and he wants her back. And she's like, 
no, you can't have me. So I don't want to spoil anything for these. I usually tend to share too much information about books. So I'm really trying to hold myself back. But I gotta, but... I gotta <laughs> say, I love that he was awful in bag. <laughs> you know, there's a redeeming arc, but there's, he was awful in bag. He was an awful boyfriend. He was, so... he totally didn't care about her. He was yeah. just like, he was like, yeah. oh, it's just an accessory. You know, she just happened to be there. So. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's important, like she was okay with it because- yeah she thought that, well, this is how it works. Like I'm his fuck toy and I'll do what he wants. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I just like that because I think it's one thing to point out that like, as women, a lot of times we're just okay with what the status quo is. And Mm -hmm. in this one, Posey was like, no, I'm going to be worth more. And he's like, well, why didn't you tell me that you wanted to be worth more? You know, anyway, it's Mm -hmm. a good one. And it's a short one too. So it's Mm -hmm. night, like a lot of mafia books can get kind of chunky. So this is a good one. It's a good palate cleanser, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wacky. It's so great. I love it. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Do you have any other recommendation? Oh, yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. I have way too many. Um, another one I've got to recommend my girl, Sophie Lark. We knew she had to show up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is fantastic. And it you can start her books in many places, but she does have three mafia series that all kind of like they all connect and like blend together but there are two main places you can start but I picked Ivan as a starting place for at least what I'm recommending because this one is really fun and very unique because Sophie also like she bucks a lot of traditions in this because she doesn't write many like virgin heroines which as I've said like that's a pretty big theme in mafia because they're supposed to be like virgin brides or whatever And the heroine in this one, her name is Sloan and she's an assassin. And this book starts when she gets a job that has a very high, like she's a poisoner. She poisons people, you know, so she's, she's, she's a black widow. She gets in there and she gets offered this job to take out the head of the, uh, I think it's the St. Petersburg. I think it's the St. Petersburg. Yeah. I think that's the syndicate, the St. Petersburg. He was like somewhere involved within that syndicate. Yeah. Because Moscow is a different family who run in that, in that series anyway, but she gets sent to kill him. And so she breaks into his compound and is going to poison him. And he wakes up just as she's about to stab him. And then he takes her prisoner instead and tries to torture the information out of her about who, sent her to kill him so I love that one a lot because they just they just butt heads in this amazing way because now he's taking her prisoner he's using a little bit of sexual torture to get what he wants and she's just like good luck I will be a sacrifice to your sexual torture oh no what are you doing to me oh darn like that kind of thing (laughs) I don't know. I love Ivan and Sloan and Sophie, the author is a good friend of mine at this point. Um, But this relationship is the most representative of like her and her husband, minus the, she tried to kill him part, but they're like the way that they spark off of each other. She says it reminds her of her and her husband quite a bit. So I like that. I love that. Oh my gosh. That's a really nice take about that. I read that book and I really loved it. I was like, I love an assassin. Um, Any type of heroine who happens to be an assassin of some sort or killer, just love it. Just a side murder. (laughs) I love it so much. But yeah, you want me to keep going with these or did you have? Okay. I was like, I had five like you asked, but let's talk. (laughs) Okay, good, good. I'll keep going. So then I have to recommend my probably one of my favorite mafia series currently all the books in the series were six star books for me which is what I call the best of the best and so the first one in this series is called Ruthless Creatures Mm -hmm. and it's by J.T. Geisinger which that was a lot of words that are very hard to say but this series is called Queens and Monsters and in my opinion they get they get better with like each the series is fantastic but it starts with Ruthless Creatures which also has an assassin but this time it's the hero (laughs) and the heroine is actually grieving because she lost her fiance just like a week before her wedding or something like that and he's been gone and he's about to be declared legally dead and she's just having a tough time with that and so her best friend whose name is also Sloan because apparently Sloan is very popular in mafia it's a thing 
they go out to a bar and they meet this guy there named Cage, who is just very sexy and is watching her. And well, it turns out he's actually sent to kill her, but she doesn't find that out immediately. And oh, also now he's her next door neighbor and they have amazing sexual chemistry with each other. So there's like all these things. And yeah, it's very hard not to spoil this one because it has a lot, but basically he was sent after her because of something her dead fiance had done. And she had no idea that this dead fiance was an accountant for the mafia, for the, for Ratva. And yeah, so she, she was, she's connected very, you know, loosely to this, but the mafia doesn't care. Like they go after everyone you cared about and they're trying to get revenge on this fiance person. So that was so hard to explain because that one's like really tricky to explain it. Yeah. But yeah, the, the newest one in that series comes out. The last one in that series comes out on the 28th of April and it was the best one yet. I got to read an arc of it. <laughs> I'm reading the second book in the series. I'm almost done with it. <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah. that one's my, oh, I know I just said that the last one was the best, but the second one's my favorite one for yeah. real. I yes. read it because it was like, I think Jensen, Jensen and said that you said it was like the greatest one out of the whole thing. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to read this. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, it's Juliet Cross is actually the one who got us to read it. Jessen's aunt got us to read it and it's fantastic. So absolutely love that. But then I have one that's a bit of an older recommendation that I feel like gets forgotten a lot lately because this author is known for her newer works quite a bit, Mm -hmm. but a book that I really loved and was one of my first mafia reads. Cause when I go back in my good reads, this is pretty much the first one I maybe ever read. There might've been one before this, but it's called the marriage contract and it's by Katie Robert. Mm. So it is. Yeah. She has a mafia series that was done with uh, forever. Yeah. So it was one of her traditionally published ones too. And this is an Irish family. They are the O'Malley's and she actually is writing the children's they're not children's books, but you know what I mean? She's writing the next generation books right now. But this first one, The Marriage Contract, is between the O'Malley's and I can't remember if it's Hannigan. I can't remember I what the think, other one. I think it's a Hannigan. I, I started it. I did not finish, but it's, it's you know. Yeah. Well, this one was much more, um, like, it's not written the way that a lot of mafia ones are now, but I really thought this one was unique because, yeah, it's going to be arranged marriage between these two families. And they're both like the oldest kids, I think. Um, and they, they become friends before, the, before their arranged marriage, which is just very unique because usually it's a very like, I'm, you know, it's like enemies to lovers and like their families are enemies. But once they get introduced to each other, they become friends and they're like, we're in this together. Like we're forging this alliance for our families. We don't need to be enemies. Like we're going to start a new generation Um, but of course there are other families and other people who don't want this union to happen. So there's assassination attempts and, you know, trying to make it look like one side is betraying the other side, but I really enjoyed this couple and I, I really enjoyed the whole series, but it is, it is written a lot different than other mafias are. And even the way she's writing the, the spinoff series, you can tell she's writing it in a newer style for sure. But Mm -hmm. these were, this was one of the first books I'd read by her and one of my first mafia too. So it it holds a a close spot in my heart because of that. So yeah. And then I just have one more that I wrote down. And again, I could go on forever because I, literally have so many but I would be remiss if I didn't recommend Serena Ackroyd's uh Filthy Fecker series also called the um oh it's her Irish Mafia damn it I forgot the other series title but it's called the Filthy Feckers by most people um and I'm specifically recommending like the second book in the series because the first book that she wrote is the first book in the series. It's called Filthy, but then Filthy Rich is where the heavier mafia content comes in because mm-hmm. Filthy was originally, it had a different name and it was this like standalone book or whatever, but Filthy Rich is a really big age gap rec- like uh, 
arranged marriage. Our heroine has like barely turned 18. She's been engaged to Owen from the, uh, this is O'Malley's too, isn't it? No. Is it O'Malley's too? The Irish mafia, they always are an O'Malley or a, I can't remember now, but um, she's from the Bratva. She's a Bratva bride and she's supposed to, they're supposed to have this um, arranged marriage. And he used to be a snipe, sniper in the army and he just doesn't want to be marrying this child bride which fair enough because he's in his like late 30s and she's 18 and he's like this is kind of gross I don't want this to happen but on their wedding day she is being walked down the aisle to him and he's just like why do I have to do this and when he lifts her veil he realizes that she has had the shit beat out of her she, he can tell that there's like bruises under her makeup. She's like shaking. She can hardly breathe. She's had her ribs broken. And he immediately has this deep seated anger for whoever did this to her. Because even though he wasn't ready to marry her, he's like, she's mine. Why did someone hurt what's mine? And what the fuck is going on? So literally they're standing at the altar and he like grabs her hand and he's like, who did this to you? And she's like, why does it matter? And he's like, because it does. <laughs> and when he finds out that her father's the one who did this to her, he beats the shit out of her dad and is like, if you ever touch her again, I'm going to shoot you. So that like ultimatum is laid down. And then on their wedding night, they don't consummate it because he's like, you have had the shit kicked out of you. I am not going to, you know, what's the word? Utilize my marital rights. And instead he makes her a blood vow and they both like, they both like cut their hands. They straight up do like a, you know, a blood vow. And he promises that he'll always tell her the truth and that he'll always protect her. And she promises to always, you know, assume the best of him and not jump to conclusions, which I just love that that's in there because in romance in general, I hate when people jump to conclusions. I love that. And they become like, they become like friends first. Like he literally Netflix and chills with her with his like teenage bride they watch all the boys I've loved before like on their honeymoon like it's adorable and so they they kind of work up to you know there being anything sexual between them and I mean I'm fine when it happens either way because I like when things are spicy right away but I just love that for her he was like no of course not you've literally been beaten I don't need to fuck you like just relax like you've been through enough so anyway that's the filthy series is wonderful. And those, 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 those evil mafia boys, they're very soft and squishy inside. And that's a, that's another thing I love about mafia. I love some of like the evilest people you could imagine Mm -hmm. having this like soft side for their women. I love antiheroes. I love villains. So it all works for me, but there you go. There's five of my best that I yeah. had to <laughs> I need to add filthy rich to my list like you just have me like that's probably gonna be after the next one that's gonna be the next book you know yep. so <laughs> awesome tell us we can find you online yeah well I'm the book refuge pretty much everywhere I mean I do have a TikTok I have a Twitter Instagram booktube I'm the book refuge there there's only one um so yeah that's where you can find me <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, John, for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is wonderful. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit retroreadnextblog.com. The Retro Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.